let's just toss uh, uh, the other thing that with Vegas before I toss the big question here. I think it, it's it's a mystery to me why they didn't play Ryan Reeves more. Yeah, that it, it baffles me too. Maybe uh, Pete DeBoer isn't a big fan of Ryan Reeves, and maybe it's not a really uh, that type of player isn't really part of uh, his strategy in uh, within. Yeah, his 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 the, the how he feels comfortable deploying uh, his uh, his lineup there, and that that might have been something that. Uh, it needs to be talked about here is yeah you might you might you might need a Ryan Reeves uh within the playoffs and th those are, those are the type of players that you kind of look for to have a spark within your lineup to make a big hit to, um, to potentially fight someone uh I guess the the only people that I could really think that he could potentially fight would be a Shea Weber uh a Ben Sherratt or maybe even a, a Joel Edmondson it, Outside of that, it's not really too many people around the league or players around the league that are able to to line up against uh, of, of Ryan Reeves. So it, it definitely is questioning, it, questionable why he wasn't uh, on the ice more or at all for that matter. Well, even like even it's not even about the fight, but just you look at the the, the that four defense for the the Canadians like Weber, Sherratt, Edmondson, Petrie. You needed to wear them down, and they just yeah. they could not do it with with the lineup they had. They just couldn't do it. So I don't see why you couldn't have Ryan Reeves play some sort of role in wearing down the the Canadians' defense, but they just refused to do it. So maybe there's um, too much respect with uh, Carey Price being a good puck mover uh, because if if you don't uh, strategically put it into the corner as you're dumping it in, if it goes behind the net, you know Carey Price is going to come out and play it and. He, there was one point last night that uh, he got taken out by Ben Sherratt, uh, and there was a there's a good possibility that Vegas was able to capitalize on that. But um, and they the, both Sherratt and Price went behind the net, but that wasn't about uh, Price playing the puck per se. It's just he, he maybe they they played the percentages on uh, that they don't need that type of player in the lineup, especially with all the statistics and. Uh, and the, the analytical stats that are out there. I, I don't think that um, they, they, there has to be a balance between two of them. And I'm not saying that um, Vegas is very analy analytically driven. Uh, I don't know that, but it just knowing where the, the trend of where the NHL is going, that they, they are looking at um, an analytics a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. The, certainly it's, it's a, dis certainly is a discussion for sure. Uh, so let's get to what a lot of people were tweeting out after the bold prediction. Um, is Jack Eichel, is Jack Eichel Vegas bound? No, no, as much, uh, if Jack, if Jack Eichel is Vegas bound, I, I, you're selling off your farm. Uh, they're, they're not looking for, if you are Buffalo, you're not looking to win now. As much as you, as a fan, want to see the success, and you've gone through a few rebuilds within the past God, two decades here, it, uh, it 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 doesn't make sense for for me if I was a GM of Buffalo to to make that trade. It, it, yeah, I, I just don't. I don't don't see Vegas having the pieces to to make that happen. And even their their top end players, like if you look up and down the lineup, it looks like the average age is around twenty nine to thirty. That that's not within the window of Buffalo. So I, whoever's thinking that, we maybe a bit clickbaity, <laughs> but I, I just don't think that they uh, they they have the pieces. The one one poll of Sean Warren from the Area to 51 podcast threw out Cody Glass, Peyton Grebs, and a 2021 first round pick. And if I I don't think that that makes a lot of sense, uh, even for Vegas to do, quite frankly. I mean, I'm not I'm I would be loath. I I don't know, I'm still still think Cody Glass. I know Cam Robinson says he's he's been ineffective, but I, I just I'm not sure I'm willing to give up Peyton Krebs in a trade yet. Um, that's me. Um, I I think he's there's a lot of I, a lot with him that I think that uh, he's he's the type of guy I think you win with. But so if I'm Buffalo, I'm certainly interested in. And again with Eichel. This is the problem. Is as much as people are like this injury is no big deal. I still want to hear about this injury. 
I want to know uh, about this in, that this Jack Eichel injury and what exactly is going on before I get what I'm giving up what I believe will be a significant amount. So, yeah, and that, that's a good point. And okay, let, let's go down that road. Let's go down the road. Okay, they can make it work. They and which is a big if because they they're like I said they have six million dollars in cap space uh, going into this off season. So they, they need to offload some sort of some contracts to make that work. And okay, so you have uh, Jack Eichel, uh, who is 23, I believe. Um, either way, he's in his early 20s, 23, 22. Uh, and he he is a really, really good player. And uh, that could he's make 24. a difference in the 24 within that yeah. lineup. And he's, he's entering his prime, uh, if not in it already. And so then... Let, let, let's go down the road of a few years. Where is this? Where where are you within um, within that organization? As far as okay, you you sell off the farm, uh, a first round pick, a Peyton Krebs, and a Cody Glass. It it just doesn't make much sense. You you're putting all your eggs in one basket, and if, it could take a long time to get the pieces after your window, after this window of the Vegas Golden Knights is, um, is over, then, then what you, you're going to have uh, another Buffalo situation where, okay, it's time to rebuild and trying to re retool if you will. But it just, I don't know. Yeah. Banners fly forever, but I feel like it's, it's a big gamble for a team that Kevy you, you've said it before uh, is, is, doesn't have that killer instinct. And does Jack Eichel push you over the edge for that killer instinct? Maybe, but I, I'd say that the I, 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 I have make to be sense. honest. I I haven't seen it. No, I, I have to be honest. I have not seen. And I, I was thinking about this last night. I'm like, is, if Jack Eichel was in this series, as a result different? I don't know that. I I'm, I I don't. I I we haven't seen him in the playoffs, right? So that's it's hard to say. And Sean again um, here says, and I'll get to Kyle's comment in a second because that's I I. Yes, it has to include any Eichel trade has to include it. And that can I say my hot take? Please do it. I got a spicy take. I would rather have at this point Shane Wright over Jack Eichel. Oh man. I but that the, I mean, it's, it's a hot like, take. And for, for a reason. I mean, we have no idea what Shane Wright's gonna be at this at the NHL level. He's a highly, highly touted prospect. Uh, that's uh, he's he's not this year, but next year's draft, right? He's the he's the twenty twenty two draft. Yeah, uh, so it, it, it's a big gamble. It really is. Uh, Jack Eichel was was one of those uh, one of those players with a year or two before his draft was very very highly touted, along with uh, Connor McDavid. And Connor McDavid stole the show, and obviously has proven to be a better player uh overall as of right now but it, man I, I i i love those takes though i really do it's 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 abnormal um and it, you could be right you really could be and i i just don't want to i don't want to you know, to get jack eichel he's a really good player he is really good and i think that if he's in if he's on um in a better situation on a better team he, he just would be he would be better he's a guy who wants to win he's cocky as fuck and he he walks around and skates uh w with a bit of swagger and i i have a lot of respect for that um i i just think that uh it's just he has the buffalo effect and look look at the players that have come out of buffalo who have uh thrived is uh it, it's crazy uh, uh, ryan o'reilly um and he he won a cup after that so yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's really hard to say what type of player he would be uh, with surrounded by uh, better players. Um, no, no offense to Sam Reinhardt uh, or Victor Olafson, but man, I, I you got to think that that if he does get traded to Vegas, that he would make a, a difference. It just how much of a difference would that would that be? Is that is that enough to to make uh, Vegas uh, you know blow over Montreal or win that game seven? Who knows? And well, but this is the, where where I'm going with that is like it it is giving. I think any trade for me, if I'm Buffalo, I'm asking for a twenty a twenty 
22 or 23 first round pick. And ultimately that's the decision that I have to make. Would I rather have the shot at taking a Shane Wright who has won pretty much everywhere that he has played. So we do know that part that his, that is part of his history. That is part of his DNA. Or would I have a, have the guy right now that I is absolutely talented, but you're going to have to give up the farm for a guy that's unsure in terms of in that we are at unsure in terms of injury. That's right. that's right now. That's that's what I'm thinking about. And you even look at there's in 2023 you got Connor Bedard and uh, Mitka, uh, Matt Gay Mitchkoff. You've got Brad Lambert in this 2022. There, there's just some interesting pieces here that I. I just that's that's where I'm hesitant with Jack the Jack Heigl trade overall, and that's why I'm my like I would take the chance at getting out going after Sam Reinhardt. But I do agree with Kyle, and I was going to bring this up anyway. If there's a way for Vegas to do it, I do think Ryan RNH would be a good fit in Vegas. Um, he is probably the type of guy that uh, he's versatile. He plays center in the wing. Um, he's great at faceoffs. Um, I think he's the type of guy that I think Vegas, that is the type of center I think Vegas should be looking a little bit more at is. And I, I think that if I'm Vegas, I agree with Kyle. I think that they should look at, at Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And if I was Ryan Nugent Hopkins, I'd be looking elsewhere. Uh, just, just along the lines of what it's, it's a whole McDavid talk. Like what, what's in Edmonton for you? If, if, if McDavid's not there, what, what other players do you have there other than Drysaddle? And I, I don't want to besmirch uh, Drysaddle or anything, um, or McDavid for that matter. But uh, outside of those two, there's not really much anything there for Nugent Hopkins other than loyalty that this is the team that drafted him. So if I was Nugent Hopkins, I think Vegas is, a, is an, it's an attractive spot um, as far as uh, lifestyle and <clears throat> the the amount of responsibility he would have on that team, I, I think it would be more than than he would at uh, in Edmonton because you don't have those major heavy hitters uh, as far as McDavid and Drysaddle go. So I think that's a that's a great spot for Vegas and for for uh, Hopkins.